Well, thank you for uh, providing me with this opportunity to address the Action Days in Copenhagen. I'm very delighted to reflect with you about the present situation and how, in particular, this massive social and economic crisis can be an opportunity to build back better. As you know, this is the worst economic and social crisis the world has been facing since the Great Depression of 1929. The figures of people having fallen into extreme poverty as a result have increased by perhaps 125 million across the world. And the reaction of governments has been to inject massive amounts of liquidities in the economy, some 15,000 billion US dollars. Um, the in levels of intervention uh, by the states and the economy is absolutely unprecedented. And I think the major choice we face is what kind of society do we want to rebuild? Where should this money go? What should we learn from our past mistakes that would allow us to reconstruct uh, a world that is more sustainable, more humane, and perhaps less um, socially unjust? In this respect, I would like to emphasize that any attempt to reconstruct uh, the economy and society should take into account the need to combine the ecological transition, reducing our impact on the environment, reducing our use of resources and the levels of waste and pollution that we create with social justice um, and an attempt to reduce poverty and reduce inequalities. I believe in fact that we will not achieve the one without the other. Reducing inequalities is an absolutely vital condition for the ecological transition to succeed. And this is true for at least uh, three reasons. First, because if you have high levels of inequality, you need much more growth, much more increase of the economic output in order to reduce poverty because that growth will be less equally spread, less equitably shared across society, you will need more growth to address the burning question of poverty. And therefore, the ecological impacts shall be worse as you try to reduce poverty. Instead, if you have more equality, if growth is more equally spread, the tension is lessened uh, between reduction of poverty on one hand and reduction of our ecological footprint, on the other hand. The second reason why equality is fundamental for succeeding in the ecological transition is because it reduces the temptation to consume simply um, in the search of achieving a certain social status. Much of our consumption, uh, much of our lifestyle choices are in fact today dictated by a desire for social ranking, a search for social status and social recognition, what the great economist Thorsten Veblen called conspicuous consumption. And of course, in more equal societies, that um, temptation of conspicuous consumption driven by status competition is much less important. In contrast, in more unequal societies, much of the consumption would be driven by this desire for distinction. Thirdly and finally, perhaps most importantly, in highly unequal societies, the economic machinery, the production system of society, will essentially cater to the desires of the richest part of the population and neglect the satisfaction of the essential needs of the poorest uh, people within society. Indeed, we sometimes think that markets respond to the needs of people. In fact, markets respond to demand as expressed by the purchasing power of different groups of the population. And if some groups of the population have a very high purchasing power, when others have much less money to put on the table, the economic machinery will primarily cater to the desires of the richest groups of the population. For example, the uh, scarce water resources will go to filling the swimming pools, 
um, of the richest groups in the population rather than allowing poor households to have access to minimum amounts of water for, for washing and cooking purposes. And so in highly unequal societies, the use of resources is much less efficient and the desires of the rich end up trumping the satisfaction of the needs of people in poverty. Now, this is why in a report I presented to the General Assembly of the United Nations in um, uh, October 2020, I presented the fight against inequalities as a central component of the Building Back Better agenda and of the ecological transition we should try to pursue. I added that this ecological transition should be helped by identifying measures that have three dividends, triple dividend measures, if you wish, that create employment for people with low levels of qualification, that reduce our ecological footprint, and that thirdly, ensure that low-income households have access to goods and services essential to lead a decent life at an affordable price. And to give some examples of such triple dividend measures, I would cite investments in public transportation systems that create jobs, that reduce, of course, pollution from the use of individual cars, and that, at the same time, ensure that even low-income households will have access to mobility and therefore access to work, uh, cultural activities, and education. Another example is the insulation of homes, right? The, the, the refurbishing of buildings um, is one way to create employment. At the same time, it reduces the, um, uh, the energy use of buildings, and it is a way to ensure that households living in these buildings that are refurbished will see their electricity bills lower as a result. So these are examples of triple dividend measures, which we can identify in areas such as energy, mobility, um, food and agriculture, and um, energy use. Thirdly and finally, I think it's important to build our Building Back Better agenda on the need to combat planned obsolescence of consumer items. Today, it is becoming a very serious problem that whatever consumer item we buy is uh, essentially defunct after um, six months or a couple of years at most of uh, that consumer item being used. Think of the iPhones, think of the, um, uh, the laptops, think uh, even of our, um, um, our clothing. Um, much of it is out of fashion, um, is technologically um, uh, defunct, or is um, considered uh, to be worthless as a result of new um, uh, fads emerging after very limited periods of time. And this results in a competition for newness, uh, for novelty, that uh, poorest uh, groups within society find very difficult to live with. And of course, it significantly increases our um, use of energy and resources within society. So for me, these would be the three major components of the next agenda for this um, reconstruction effort we have tried to, to launch, combating inequalities, identifying triple dividend measures in a series of areas um, in which investments should be made today, and thirdly, combating the planned obsolescence of consumer items. That is, I think, how we can reconcile the ecological transition with the need for social justice, and I very much hope that these action days will be an opportunity to contribute to this debate as to which new model of development we should imagine for the future. Many thanks indeed, and, and I very much look forward to pursuing our dialogue.